The modify commands available within Visual allow you to change existing rooms, calculation zones, and other objects after they've been created. The ability to modify objects in the design environment saves you time by eliminating the need to recreate objects in response to design changes. The modify panel of the Home tab contains the most commonly used commands including move, copy, array, rotate, erase, extrude, and stretch. For full access to the modify commands, select the modify tab in the ribbon bar. All of the modify commands follow a similar selection process. First select the command, then select the object or objects you would like to modify. If the command has additional properties, they can be changed in the command properties tab dynamically shown in the ribbon bar. The command is then implemented by selecting a base point and if necessary, a destination point to perform the modification. Most modify commands in Visual 2012 are the same as previous releases of Visual. Visual 2012 does include some new modify commands like the pull and stretch commands. The modify commands require that you first select the objects you want to modify. The modify commands allow you to select multiple objects or only one object at a time. Once objects are selected, additional information may be necessary to complete a specific command. Because the object selection process is a common occurrence, Visual incorporates a consistent routine for the sake of simplicity. Usually it's easiest to make selections when in wireframe display mode. In Visual you can select objects using a selection box or by using a solid or crossing selection window. The simplest selection tool is the selection box. After you select a command, your cursor will change from the default axis into a blue selection box. With the selection box, you can select objects by clicking on them. If you're in wireframe mode, you will need to click on the edge of an object to select it. If there are multiple objects underneath the selection box, you can cycle through the objects by left-clicking your mouse until your desired object is highlighted. By default, most commands allow you to select multiple objects. To select another object with the selection box, simply move your cursor over it and left-click again. Each selected object will be highlighted. Selection windows allow you to quickly select multiple objects. To create a selection window, left-click in an area of the design environment with no objects under it. Visual will detect that there are no objects under your selection point and automatically convert the selection box into the first corner point of a selection window. Moving your cursor allows you to change the size of the rectangular selection window. Left-clicking again will define the extents of the selection window. There are two types of selection windows, a solid selection window or a crossing selection window. A solid selection window can be used to select all objects completely enclosed within the window. Objects partially outside a solid selection window will not be added to the selection. Solid selection windows are drawn by left-clicking in the design environment and then dragging your cursor to the right. Solid selection windows are light blue with a solid dark blue perimeter. A crossing selection window selects all objects that are partially and entirely inside the selection window. Crossing selection windows are drawn by left-clicking in the design environment and then dragging your cursor to the left. Crossing selection windows are light green with a dashed blue border. If you select an object by mistake and no longer wish to have it selected, you can remove it by selecting the Remove Selection button from the Dynamic Properties tab of the ribbon bar. Now when you select objects, they will be removed from your selection. You can also enable this mode by pressing the R key during a selection. To return to adding objects to your selection, select the Add Selection button from the Dynamic Properties tab. You can also return to adding objects by pressing the A key on your keyboard when in selection mode. Another powerful selection command found in the Dynamic Properties tab is the Previous Selection command. If you have just made a complex selection of objects, for example moving the desks in a room, you can then save time when you decide to copy these desks to the next room by using the previous selection command. After selecting the copy command, you can then just select the previous selection command, and all the desks from your last move command will be automatically highlighted. The previous selection command will remember your last selection for you. Next to the previous selection command is the select all command. This command selects all objects in the design environment. 
you can combine the select all command with selection filters to quickly select all the luminaires or all the calculation grids in your design. Now that we are familiar with selecting objects, let's take a look at the modify commands in Visual. The pull command is used to pull a single closed planar polygon or a single surface on a solid in the direction perpendicular to the object. You can use pull to turn a closed 2D planar polygon into a 3D object. Select the pull command and then select an existing 2D planar polygon. You can now pull the polygon into a 3D object either above or below the initial surface. The volume of your new object is displayed with red lines. Click to finalize the height of your new object. You can use the pull command to change the length of a room. Using the pull command, select the end wall of a room. You can then drag the wall in or out to extend or shorten the room. Simply click again to set the new position of the wall. The stretch command allows you to change the size of an object. For example, using the stretch command, you could resize an existing calculation zone to respond to changes in the room size. To do this, select the stretch command from the modify panel of the home tab in the ribbon bar. Select the edge of the calculation grid you want to extend. The two corner points of the selected edge are highlighted with red boxes. This means these two points will be stretched together. You can now click a base point to start your stretch and then a destination point to define the change to the object. Using the stretch command, you can choose to stretch edges as defined by a set of corner points or stretch a single corner point. You can reselect the stretch command by right clicking the mouse to begin the previous command. Now select the calculation grid again, but this time select just a corner. Now you can drag this corner point around to make a non-rectangular grid. You cannot drag a corner point across an edge of the same surface, and your selected corner point must stay in the same plane as the rest of the surface. You can offset lines and polygons in Visual 2012 using a similar process as you would in popular drafting software. From the Modify tab of the ribbon bar, select the Offset command. Then select a line, rectangle, polygon, circle, or arc, and then click a base point. After you select a base point, you will be able to preview your offset lines, which are displayed in red. You can drag your mouse to either side of the line to change which direction the offset will be drawn. You can also adjust the length of the offset in the Dynamic Properties tab of the ribbon bar. Left-clicking again will finalize the offset lines. When you offset rectangles or other closed lines, the offset shape will also be a continuous closed line. To array an object or luminaire in Visual 2012, select the Array command from the Modify group in the Home tab of the ribbon bar. You can then select the object you would like to array. In the Dynamic Properties tab in the ribbon bar, you can switch between arrays defined by the quantity of elements in the array or by the spacing between elements. If you select Array by Spacing, you will be able to enter a desired spacing between elements, for example, 8 feet in the X direction and 12 feet in the Y direction. After you select your base point, elements will be added to the array as spacing allows until you select your destination point. If you select Array by Quantity, the area will have your predefined quantity of elements as defined by the X and Y quantity. As you move your mouse before selecting your destination point, the spacing between elements will increase or decrease. Using arrays, you can quickly create gridded luminaire layouts in your design. You can also create polar arrays in Visual using the Array Polar command. The modify commands available in Visual 2012 are more powerful than ever, allowing you to change existing geometry and calculation planes in ways not possible in earlier versions of Visual. Modify commands like Array and Mirror can also be used to speed up layout of luminaires in your design. If you have any comments or questions about the modify commands, send an email to support at visual-3d.com.